Hello. So in the previous videos, we saw how Hotwire works and how we can use it, you know, vanilla Hotwire stuff. And then we introduced the package to clean up and easy the usage of this technique in Laravel. And today I'm here to demo the mobile aspect of Hotwire. And I'm going to do that using uh, the demo application that the Basecamp folks have built. But yeah, let's let's get to it. So if we head over to the Go native on iOS and Android section in the handbook of Tubo, we can see that there are Tubo native iOS and Tubo native Android. I'm going to use the Tubo native Android because I'm running Linux over here. But it should work similarly. So the way that Tubo native works is you are going to build a fully native Kotlin application for your Android in this case, or a Swift application for your iOS side. So there is a demo application over here that we are going to use. The demo has a responsive web application and a native website. So if you can render that in a responsive layout for mobile, maybe Galaxy, we can see that it renders responsively nicely and yeah, it just works. It, this is using Turbo, by the way. So what we can do is try to run the Turbo native Android and I actually have Android Studio set up over here. So let's try to run it. So we should be able to just run the application and then I'm going to talk about the configuration points. So yeah, we can see here that it rendered as a native application and inside this is actually a native shell and inside it renders the HTML content. So we have everything like push to refresh and everything that seems to be native. And if we click around, we'll see that it will behave like a native application. So page transitions, they look like new activities being transitioned, pushed and replaced and all that. But this is actually Turbo Drive behind the scenes. So on the web, Turbo Drive will hijack your links and form submissions and do the requests as Ajax. But on the mobile, the Turbo native bridge will make it behave like native page transitions, not pages, but uh, fragments. So the way you should structure your application is you have a single activity and inside this single activity, you will render either Turbo native web view fragments or fully native fragments depending on the route that Tubo is making a visit. If we inspect what is going on over here, we can see more stuff. There is a constant over here that sets the URL of our application. In this case, it's pointing to the same application that we interact in the browser over here. In our case, it could be our application URL and it also creates some other constants. This is not just a mere web view around a responsive application. It's actually more powerful than that. So if you see here for a page that returns a 404 response, we can render a native view. So the way that this is done is the default web fragment will catch an error here. And for 401 responses, it will send you to the login page. And for everything else, it will render the default error page, which should be this one. So this is actually a native, fully native error page. And you can do that per page starts code or per page or whatever you want. But that's not all. Let's try out this error case over here. So this page here needs authentication. So once, once you try to access it, it will prompt you with a login screen. This login screen is actually a web view as well. So it loads as a model. If I try to log in now, it will submit the form 
Turbo will do its thing. And then the web application will authenticate me and redirect me back to the home screen. But now I'm actually authenticated and access the protected area. What is important here is that the login screen loads as a model and it's intercepted over here. So if we check the main session, there is a configuration file over here under assets JSON, configuration.json. And this should be a mix of configuration, some settings that you have and some rules which should feel familiar to you because this, these are like routes, the web routes on your web application, but for your mobile. So it's stating here that any URI pattern, anything after your host name will be sent to the web fragment, which extends from Turbo web fragment. It knows how to interact with Turbo. So this is the default case. And then this is specific compared to the other one. So this says that the home should actually render the home view, the home fragment. And if we spec that out, we can see that it extends the default web fragment and uses a custom layout for the home screen. Yeah, as you can see, it just sets the header, the title bar over here to use a custom image basically. And that's, that's it. The include portions is still, it's a tubo view layout. So yeah, you can do that kind of customization. Furthermore, we can see that if the signing, if the URL, if a URI finish ending with signing, which should be the login page, um, is visited by Tubo native, it will open it as a modal fragment. So that's why you see this behavior of the screen trying to load and then a modal pops up. Yeah, this is done by this fragment behavior. And we can see that if any route ends with slash new, which should be the forms to create new resources, it will use this modal um, screen. So that's from Turbo, from the Turbo native library. We shouldn't change it, but let's try that out. Let's try to create a, yeah. So if you try to click this one, load a web page mobily, it will open that up in a model. So it, it renders over the previous page. It's not stacked um, as a new fragment. It renders it over the, that page. So that's cool. If we submit this form, it will send a Turbo request to the backend and that will redirect to this page, which the app will just work basically. This should get you 80% there. So forms will open in models. You can change them. Your backend will re redirect you and Turbo native will do the page visits for you on mobile. But some pages you do need to implement fully native. So you can actually do that. So for this numbers page, if we visit that page on the browser, we can see that this visits the numbers page and this renders the page in HTML and it only renders 10 numbers because let's say we are using pagination over here, but when you're native, you don't want to render only 10 digits. Let's say you want to consume an API instead and render it fully native, not render the web view. So we can actually do that. So this is telling, so this is telling Turbo native to send any routes ending with slash numbers to this numbers fragment. It, it is a fully native fragment. So it's doing, it's extending the turbo fragment. It's doing a, f a visit to the number when the number is clicked and all that. So let's try it out in the mobile app. We click intercept with a native view. It should open a new activity and this scrolls more than 10 numbers. It's using a fully native fragment, not a web view. And if we click on it, we can see that it, the number that we chose pops up over here 
And that's because we configured the numbers ending numbers numbers slash an ID or number to open with a numbers sheet. And that behavior just happens. So over here in the numbers fragment we made a visit to that route and Tubal native intercepts this request, checks the configuration if there is any button over here, and it will render your fragment, your mobile fragment for you. So this is pretty powerful, like you can do all this kind of stuff, for instance, if you're rendering if you're rendering files and you wrap your image over with a link to the image raw file itself, you can instruct the mobile app to load any image in an image view or fragment. And in that you can do really cool stuff. So let's say you're visiting this page, which renders in a web view. And there is an image over here which with a link that points to the image resource, which ends with .png, I think. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, JPEG, actually. So if we tap on it, we should render the image in full screen. Remember, there is a link wrapping the image, and Turbo is hijacking that click and sending to an image viewer fragment. And that image viewer fragment is rendering in a new fully native view. So if we inspect that, we should see the view that the image renders in. So this configuration file, it actually can be used for feature toggles as well. So if you're working or a feature flag configuration file for your mobile, so if you're working on a feature that you don't want to release right away to all users, you want to work on it, but you want to deploy it, you can use the settings file over here for it. So let's say you have a task counter feature, something like that. You can disable it for all users in using the app, but enable it for you when working on it locally. So it can be used for that as well. But that's not all. If we get back to the main session nav host frame fragment, where we load the configuration file, it loads from a file that ships with the app itself. So it, it has to go over the app store workflow of submitting an app, getting approved and all that. But you can also do some over the air updates. Besides this one, you can also specify the remote file URL. And this should be a URL. You can use home URL, I guess. And concatenate with a Android configuration.json file that you host on your server. Yeah, that's not how we should concatenate in Kotlin, I guess. What this does is you can host one of these configuration files on your server and update your application without going over the submission process. That allows you, for instance, to change the routes, the configuration routes over here. So you can work on a fragment that will be used soon to replace a page and you can change the pattern for a specific page to use the new fragment or to use the modal fragment instead of doing the web view thing. And you can change that on your server version of the configuration file. And every time the package opens, the, the application opens, it will fetch and update the configuration file from your server. So you can change how your application behaves on the mobile, how, how a page loads, if it should load in a modal fragment or on a web view fragment or whatever. And we can change it over the air. You don't have to go through the update process. So that's pretty cool. That's everything. That's hotwire, turbo native, turbo everything. Some stuff that we haven't talked about here is stimulus. As you can see, you don't actually need stimulus. Just plays really well with turbo because it's an HTML centric approach to 
mark up your, your HTML tags with behavior, JS behavior. So as you saw, Tubo injects HTML using Tubo streams and Tubo frames. And if your HTML is annotated with the behavior of that part of the fragment, that's cool. It will just work. You can also use Alpine. Alpine JS is an alternative to that. You just need a bridge for that. But yeah, in the documentation for the package, I actually talk about this bridge because Jetstream uses Alpine JS. And if you're using Jetstream with Dobo, you're going to need this bridge as well as the Livewire bridge. The third component is Strata, but Strata is not released yet. And as you could see, you don't need Strata to build mobile applications using Turbo. Everything should work with the native bridges. What Strata is going to do when it's released is it's going to allow you to delete some code from your mobile application. So I'm not sure what it's going to be deleted, but you, yeah, they say that you're going to clean up some stuff that you are going to have to do right now. But everything's possible with what we currently have on the Turbo Android and Turbo iOS bridges. So this was it. This is a longer version of the introduction that I wanted to make. And this is everything. This is not wired. This is Turbo Laravel, the current state of the library. And this is Turbo native, the Android aspect. This whole Turbo native thing was already possible with Turbo links before, but for some reason it's not being talked about that much, I think. And I think this is a great way to build applications and to, you know, it's a great way to have a small team building ap applications and delivering to many different uh, targets and relying on the main application as the source of truth and, you know, having this shared core between all your clients. So yeah, I really like this approach. Let me know what you think and yeah, build something awesome.